took and what most of you took there's a few civilians in here but you all took an oath to defend this country from enemies from within and from without you may have stood shoulder to shoulder with one of the men and women that we bury here in this cemetery because from that induction center you went to all parts of the world sometimes you met the guys again sometimes you did but we all meet here when our time comes because I was an American soldier I'm now an American vet that oath I took still is in force and because of that We make sure that we leave no soldier, no veteran, no one behind. We don't know what happened to these guys when they left the military. They may have had problems where their family has turned their back on them or they have turned their back on the family. Maybe it's just because the families don't want anything to do with them. Maybe the families can't be found. That's why the names of those that are being buried today or have been buried in this past week will be published. So when the families, if the families do conduct a search, they'll be able to find them. 
and it's amazing how many have been found just by this service being published on the web. So today we, are, we will be honoring these men and women as they join with their brothers and sisters in these beautiful green hills of Riverside National Cemetery. The names of the Veterans at Out family that were buried last week are as follows. Robert Harrison, uh, unknown branch of service, honorably served. Will Hanley, United States Army, honorably served. Richard Campbell, United States Army, honorably served. The names of the eight veterans that are being brought out today for burial or doing honors for because we're their family are as follows. Clarence Croder, United States Army, Korea. Leonard Lamas, United States Army, World War II. James Hayes, United States Army, Korea. Melvin Karnowski, United States Army, World War II. Rocky Hardville, United States Navy, Vietnam. Lee Summers, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Lee ba Bear, United States Army, World War II. And his wife, Catherine Bear. Uh, they died one week apart. He died January 22nd, 20, 2015. And she died January 29th, 2015. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, it's an honor and a privilege to be here in front of you. Uh, John Hemp, our friend, asked that we do a dedication this morning for Marine Corporal Dustin Jerome Lee, who was one of the first dog handlers killed in the current conflict. He was killed in Iraq on March 21st, 2007. The Warrior's Prayer. We are not the privileged. We do not choose our fate. We are not, we are the warriors, the protectors. We stand for righteousness. And we stand for those who cannot stand for themselves. We bow to no king but one, our God. Among our ranks are those who by, the, by grace or by happenstance return from battle with no more than the company of ghosts eternal in trouble. And there are those who carry home the weight of human frailty, wounds of every sort, but blessed with the opportunity of rebirth. And lastly, there are those whom we mourn, our brothers in arms, brothers in death. Bless and guide us, Lord, each and every one. Amen. Amen. Today's a very special day. This is the Medal of Honor Day. In March 25th of 1863, they established and confirmed the Medal of Honor. The first Medal of Honor winner, or I should say recipient, was uh, Colonel Bernard Irving of the U.S. Army. There has been 3,469 Medal of Honor recipients. There are three Medals of Honor, one for the Army, one for the Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, and one for the Air Force. There were three previous medals instead of the Medal of Honor. The Fidelity Medal, which was in 1780, the Badge of Merit in 1782, and the Certificate of Merit in 1847. In 1863, the Congress made the Medal of Honor permanent. Reading from the Bible, Corinthians 15, 5. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sin? The sin is death, but thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the works of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is, is not in vain. Please uncover. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for these men and women who have served our country honorably. And thank you for the men and women that are serving today and have served. Give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage we need to face our enemies each day and conquer them. Please give us safe patch this day if it is your will. This I pray in Jesus Christ, your Savior's name. Amen. Amen. In memory of today, the Medal of Honor Day, uh, I don't know how many of you remember the name of Jan James Sumner. 
He's the uh, Medal of Honor recipient who's buried in a dog park in uh, Ventura. Best place. <laughs> and uh, for the last two or three years, Gunny and several a couple of others of us have been trying to get him exhumed and moved to probably Bakersfield or or here where he can be buried properly. That fight is still ongoing because now all of a sudden the city of Ventura thinks that he's one of their historic landmarks. Well, he lived in Los Angeles and he went to Ventura, got sick and died. That's his length of stay in Ventura. Uh, since then, there's been another one found. And that one is being taken care of, I believe it's in Arizona. And it looks like it's going to be a speedy recovery to get him back to a, uh, a place of honor in the National Cemetery. If that happens, that will help in the, hopefully help in the movement of uh, James Sumner to a place of honor. There are also, I believe the number is 50 other veterans in that dog park. It used to be a cemetery. The city came through, knocked down all the headstones, threw them in a trash pile, and uh, told the local art students in the schools that if they needed marble or whatever, they could go dig them out of that uh, heap of marble headstones and carve whatever they wanted out of them. And uh, then they turned the, the park into a city park. And uh, it's a place for dogs to roam three, free, and they can do their business on top of the graves or whatever. And anyway, it's very disrespectful of our men who have served in the past. He was just a common soldier and his ranks are growing thin, but his presence should remind us we may need his like again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning. A soldier died today. Amen. Thank you all for being here.